Hey, yeah, g'day and welcome back to my channel. I like playing with old industrial CNC machines, at least the little ones. So I've got a couple of them in my basement here. Now when you buy these old machines, if they were still working, they'd still be working. So you can normally only get them for a good price if there's something wrong with them. And therefore you really can't avoid getting into wiring and wiring schematics to be able to troubleshoot them and get them working again. Now I'm a mechanic by trade so I really didn't have any idea of the Sparky stuff. The whole wiring was a bit of a challenge when I got started. So this week's video I'm going to talk more about wiring and probably more specifically talk about wiring schematics, why they're important and how to make them. Now when I got the Maho I couldn't actually read schematics. You know, I'm a mechanic, and back when I did my training, they taught us a six week phase on electrics. Didn't really touch on schematics or standard practices or anything like that. It was mainly just how not to kill yourself around electrical stuff. And then we moved on to riveting and troubleshooting mechanical systems and all the other stuff you needed. So when I started on this, I really had no clue. For example, of a main contactor like this, I didn't realize that it gets broken down on the schematic on multiple pages. Let's say this is the main spindle contactor of the Maho 1K1. There'll be a picture showing its physical location, which is right here. The main contacts of that contactor, these, these big ones through here, are shown in one location. The control coil to switch it is in a separate location. And the feedback or secondary contacts may be somewhere completely different. Like in this case, you can see that when that main motor gets switched on, power gets sent to release the brake. Kind of makes sense. It took me a while to work out how this all fits together in the scheme of things. Yeah, so because I was a mechanic and not a Sparky, I sure had a lot to learn about this stuff. Still do. It pretty quickly became clear to me that if I started changing stuff and didn't document it, it would never work. And if it did work, the first time it needed troubleshooting, then it would not work. Here's an example here. This is the existing axis driver for the Maho, the Indramat. Rather than the old Philips uh, controller which used to order it around, it now gets ordered around by Linux CN3C through a Mesa 7i77 card. These are the changes I made, adding this card, which pins connect to which pins on the Indramat. And to do all this, I actually used the Adobe Acrobat because I had the existing plans and that was a real pain in the neck. I had to go through and like draw each of these wires individually. Any of these symbols I sort of had to cut paste from somewhere else on the schematic and then change the naming and stuff. It's kind of slow and painful work to do these corrections. Mail time. These are the lower powered relays. These, these ones will be used for the coolant pump and variator. And I got a spare. This is the cable channel I need to work on the control cabinet of the Shelblin. Got two different sizes, I think 60 and 40. When it came time to do the mini lathe, I knew I needed a better solution. So it turns out my work computer had Visio on it. And visio has got a set of like electrical symbols, so I use that to draw the wiring diagrams for this lathe. Visio's not completely terrible for doing this job, but it's still kind of clunky. It's not designed for it really. By the way, when you do a machine, print out a set of schematics and put them somewhere in the machine. You know, computer files and stuff, they can easily get lost, but if the hard copy's in the machine, there's a good chance that they'll stick with it. The next owner will certainly thank you. Oh hey, this channel's number one fan, Nico's here. He's brought around his electric scooter to do some sort of mod. Not working scooter, not working. Yeah, we're adding a trailer hitch to a non-working electric scooter, right? I'm planning to 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 some of the parts of the car, engines, wheels, on bikeways. The reason why I'm reinforcing the trailer or the baggage rail is because I don't want that to fail. We all know the real reason Nico came around is because he wanted to use the angle grinder. He was feeling so good, I'm telling you. So let me see this correctly. So this is the trailer that's going to get towed around behind your scooter. Yeah. And this is a Eurobox. Yes. Are you making the scooter to try and steal all of my Euroboxes? Hey, wait a minute. Is there a plan? Obviously there is a plan. You know why I'm always doing plan? Nope. So that I can measure the amount of things which are going wrong in anything I'm planning. That's a scooter? 
There's your little picnic box uh, so. carrier at the back. And somewhere here. Oh, that was the trailer. Cop okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. I get you. Yeah. And now you need a tow bar. May I make a suggestion? No, 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 no. I know your suggestions. So this was obviously made by somebody who didn't really think through the, the street thing or made it just strong enough for your lunch. You mean, you mean welded by apes? Yeah, yeah, or, or me, but this is not terribly strong. Instead of connecting the trailer into that kind of weak baggage rack thing, why not run some sort of a tow bar directly into the main chassis rails here and connect to that? Because I already cut them to make two small ones. So now you come with the smart idea, yeah? Now this Schoblin 125 CNC, which I'm currently converting to Linux CNC, is a much more complicated machine. With a tool changer, a pneumatic uh, tailstock, gear changing system, also a much more powerful and dangerous machine. More complicated machine means more complicated wiring. And more complicated wiring means I need a better solution than to use Visio for drawing these schematics. On the Linux CNC forum, Arvid DB recommended I try Q Electro Tech. It's a freeware program, seems to do all of your industrial schematic kind of things, not just electrics, also pneumatics. So I downloaded it and thought I'd give it a go. Spent a fair bit of time in the last week watching tutorials and just trying things out. Now my mate Sergey has complained that hey this is not a woodworking channel and while he's right I'm about one year behind schedule on this one honeydew I need to make this sort of side cabinet thing for my wife's office so you gotta do what you gotta do So now that the top is made next thing I've marked out the timber that needs to be cut to form the legs Now to cut them nice and square I've broken out my crosscut sledge it just runs on the side of the table. Did you see that the James Webb Space Telescope has now completed its uh, transformer phase? Fantastic. Now they just got to make sure they don't push it too far because if it gets pushed with too much energy it'll go past the L2 Lagrange point and fly off into space never to be seen again. That would suck. To laminate up these legs I made this little uh, alignment jig just to make sure I get the leg extensions in the right place. So I need three short, two long, Oops. This is where the jig comes in. Aircraft schematics are drawn very similar to any other industrial schematics, but because there are so many complex systems, the whole set runs over thousands of pages, probably similar to a large car plant or something I imagine. Back when I worked at Lauderia, we had triple sevens, six sevens, three sevens, but also a bunch of Canada regional jets. The low serial number regional jets hadn't really matured from their business jet origin, so they were pretty unreliable. I think if an avionics technician starts the trade today and works straight away on A320s or 737s, which are incredibly well sorted and reliable aircraft, It'll probably take them years to get much exposure to the real problems that need troubleshooting through the schematics. Whereas back at Lauderia, our avionics guys were constantly having to troubleshoot failures in all of the different systems of the aircraft. So they sure got a lot of experience and became incredibly good avionics engineers really quickly. Unreliability is a great teacher. My chilies haven't germinated yet. In fact, it looks like I'm just growing some mold. Now the glue is dried on those legs, I'll run them through the jointer to clean them up before I stick them together into assemblies.
quick sand and then they'll be ready for putting together. This one got quite a bit of chip out unfortunately. I tried from both directions but didn't really want to cut that nicely. It's quite a nice shake in this board. This one and this one probably from the same board I guess. Oh yeah, you can see it in there as well. So let's take a look at one example. My three-phase power comes in through this cable into this terminal block. From the terminal block, power gets fed up to this main switch. From the main switch, the power then comes through a three-phase breaker. From these terminals, I break off the three-phase power to come back up to the main spindle motor contactor. And from there, the power then comes into the line reactor, out of the line reactor to the VFD, out of the VFD to the motor. Before it gets to the motor, it goes through the sine wave filter. And only then, this is the main motor cable back to the other end of the machine. The motor wires go through another terminal block. Now, a couple of you pointed out that one of these is loose. I think it was number four. Aha. Uh -huh. Thanks, guys. Plus, I need to jump a... I think one, two, and three together to set the motor onto its high speed windings. So I'll leave that open for now. And from there to the trusty motor. I quite like that modular way of doing the schematic drawings where you separately work through the power section, the control section, and the feedback and signaling section without having to try and do it all in one go. So far, I've only drawn my first partial schematic in Q Electrotechnic. This is just the power electrics. I still need to look at control and feedback. I also need to work out how to number all the pins and wires, etc. Need to watch a few more videos for that. But the first impression is very positive. I got a suggestion from Twisted F8, so let's give this a go, shall we? Guess I'm gonna have to leave that to dry, so come back next week and we'll see whether it worked. Thanks for watching.